The Stax O-Drive 1 is a blues-style overdrive guitar pedal designed to emulate what sounds like the Boss Blues Driver or, more closely, the Marshall Blues Breaker. This pedal is built in a metal enclosure and has true bypass switching. It can only be powered by 9V DC and is too small for a 9V battery unless powered externally. This pedal currently costs $29 at the time of this recording. Thank you to Stax for sending me this pedal. Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about the Stax O-Drive 1. So first of all, some things to get out of the way. Thank you Stax for sending me this pedal. I very much appreciate it. I very much appreciate you taking a risk on my small channel. Next thing to get out of the way, this is an overdrive pedal. Overdrives will not always work the same for everyone. There are many different overdrives to fit a few different purposes. As you'll see with this one, this is meant to be a blues pedal, which typically means that it's darker. So if you already have a dark tone, this might not be what you... This might not work for you, but it can get kind of crispy on the higher end of the tone. So maybe you'd like it, maybe you won't. Speaking of crispy audio, check out the mic on this guy, am I right? But keep that in mind, you might not get the exact same tone that I do because there can be very, very many variables. Next thing, um, I've started to mess with the EQ on the amps, on my amps a little. So I will hopefully include a picture of the amp controls here. Okay, so with that out of the way, construction of the pedal, nice. It's what you expect it to be. Everything works properly and the foot switch feels quite nice. It's not very soft, but it's definitely firm. So, you know, with a foot, it's gonna be easy. It's a little hard to press from my angle here, trying to get at it, but that's probably better for the better when it's on a pedal board. Next thing, box. It is just your typical standard mini pedal box, though it does have a labeling sticker. Very nice for people who collect a lot of pedals. Um, nothing on the inside. It only comes with the pedal and manual. So that's next. The manual is not exactly helpful. It says, thank you for purchasing. Before you operate it, you should read this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It says that the switch acts as a switch. It, it says the LED turns on when it's on. Um, gain says that it adjusts the degree of overdrive and then tells you which way is more and less. The level says that it's the volume. Makes sense. Tone says that it... Tone says control the brightness of tone. So for many beginners, that might not be a good idea because they might not associate brightness with um, higher end tone. And by that, I don't mean like more expensive tone, obviously. I mean higher on the sound end. What I meant is that it's probably not a good idea to use ungeneralized terms for beginners. What I mean by that is that beginners might not know what words like bright and dark mean in the context of tone. So it would probably be more beneficial to them if you explained it a bit differently, such as this knob adjusts the sound to have more high or low end frequency. This isn't a perfect example, of course, but it might be easier for a beginner to understand. For those who don't know, input says that it's an input, output says that it's an output, and power jack says, that, says the polarity that it is 9 volts, to negative but it does not say the milliamps oh but it says it under specifications it says working current eight milliamps anyway all of that boring stuff out of the way let's finally pick up a guitar huh all right we will be using a squire stratocaster we'll be using primarily the middle position that's my favorite position and it's unique to the stratocaster and it sounds the best to me I don't know where I left that other pick, but, oh, this is our clean tone. All right, we're in drop D tuning. Let's turn on the pedal with the pedal, 
With the volume set to where it needs to be, the gain will be set to minimum, and the tone will be set to noon. So this um, pedal, I suspect, is based off of a blues breaker or blues driver. I'm leaning more towards blues breaker because it doesn't sound anything like my blues driver, really. It doesn't get as gainy either, but my blues driver also seems like it's a little messed up. It doesn't sound that great, honestly. I do have a loop set up on a Rowan loop station here. Unfortunately, it seems like the loop makes the tone sound a little darker. Because let's try, um, I'll let the loop play here. So now I'll attempt to replay that relatively simile, similarly. So yeah, as you can probably see, um, it doesn't exactly come out right. Unfortunately, I guess I need a different looper. Um, I was really hoping to use the loop to be able to judge. We're going to use the loop. T We're going to try and use the loop <laughs> to judge um, the difference between the sounds. Because there are different degrees of, of drive that you get that affect different parts of it. Let's mess with the drive first, because I think that the tone will become more apparent with more drive. So let's do the drive first. Normally I would do the tone first, but we're going to mix it up. Trying a whole bunch of new things today. So we're going to try it with drive at about 9 o'clock on, on a normal clock. Here is the loop. So, I'm still just kind of hearing a clean boost, for the most part. Um, there might be a little grit under there. So when you play your lower strings, you're getting that a little bit of, a little bit of nastiness, which is, you know, the good nasty. Nice. 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 <laughs> but when you play single strings, you're just getting mostly a clean boost still. So. That's kind of typically how I like my pedals, uh, at least my overdrives. So let's continue on. Let's. How I was using it before was around this gained gain setting here, which is about like 11 or 11, 11:30, something like that. Let's use the loop. So we're getting some nice, rich distortion that's not like, it's not like a nasty distortion, but it's, it's that, it's that kind of enhancer distortion. When you play multiple thicker chords, and then on solos, you're getting some 
very extremely light distor light distortion, light overdrive, because uh, we're still have it low. And so I think that this is a very nice setting. This is one of my favorite places to have this pedal. So let's move the gain to noon. Let's use the loop. So, I hate how blown out that sounds. I'm obviously not a soloist, so uh, it might hit some sour notes here and there. So we're just getting a little bit of the same from our last setting, but louder, I'm feeling. I feel, you know, there's just a little more distortion on both things. There's just a little bit more grit on the, the fat strings and a little, just an itty bitty more grit on your solos. At noon, it's not making a dramatic difference besides it being louder. I also have like a weird hiccup thing going on, sorry. Alright, I don't know how much I lost. I got too into the recording and I forgot to reset the camera. So mad. I hate Canon so much right now. I'm really getting a little pissed off at this looper. Um, it is not as great as I thought it was. Um, it also gets a little warm, actually, to the touch. Um, which I didn't notice when I first started reviewing it, so I don't know if something is malfunctioning in it or if it is just the way it is. I don't know if that heat is what's causing the, the darker tone. Moving on, we're gonna go to the 130 around that area. Here's the loop. I tried lowering the volume on the looper a little <laughs> to see if that would help that blown out sound. Let's see actually. Only a little. What I was hearing here was... <laughs> is you get a really nice solo tone on this setting. Um, and you get a pretty fat thick distortion when on bar chords. That's pretty sick. It's not... It's it's like a lot... It's not exactly a... It's hard to describe because it is kind of distortion levels. It's not, it's not even a... Over, it's a little past overdrive at this point. But it did sound a little... On the chords, it sounds a little muddy. Um, so I think once you get past the noon point, you're kind of out of chord territory. You're in bar chord, power chord territory, and uh, solo territory. cool but we still have some distortion to go let's turn it to about three o'clock let's use the loop Okay, interesting. So we're getting some good distortion. This is actually a 
pretty decent distortion tone. Hang on, I'm trying to remember something. That's like roughly uh, an Aussie song. I don't know. <laughs> That's a, I obviously changed it up a little bit, but it's getting up there in the distortion. Um, it's not exactly a rock tone based on you know the tone, which you might be able to get it with the um, the tone control. You know what? It's my video. I can see if I want to. Let's can, let's see if we can get a a, a chuggy tone. So there's kind of a like hump right at the end because it cancels out the bass side I think completely on the potentiometer, which is kind of common. Um, I've no I've had that happen many times trying to build my own guitar pedal circuits. That's actually really bright. Probably want to tone that down just a little. So, you know, that's using it kind of improperly, but some people like to use overdrives as distortions and actually just put like two overdrives one after the other to get stacked drive tones because then you get kind of the distortion. So with tone back at noon, we are going to max this thing out. Wait, no, we haven't even seen the... Alright, well, that's still, it's a, it's a rich, it's a rich solo tone, but I don't think the solo tone is going to get too much more outlandish from here. Um, I think that's basically the maximum solo tone that you get, for the most part, other than tweaking, other than tweaking the actual EQ. So, let's max this thing out on gain and see what it sounds like. Here's the loop. Okay, so that's a pretty thick distortion that we're getting. Yeah, that's a pretty good distortion, really. Um, and then the solo tone is, you know, about the same. Actually, the distortion has seemed to kind of... It's enhanced it actually a little more at the max tone to me, personally. Um, it might be hard to tell from the microphone. I sat there for a while trying to figure out the perfect position to replicate at least this pedal to what I'm hearing in the room. I tried my best. Um, this is obviously not perfect because there's a, I think there's a little more bass in the room than there. There's a little less treble in the room compared to the microphone, I think. Of course, this is a cheap pedal and you can get it on Amazon. So if you don't like it, you can buy it and then return it because that's the best way to know if you like a pedal is to honestly just try it. So that was the gain. The gain sounds pretty cool. Let's turn it back to what I think is the sweet spot for this overdrive, which is around the 1130 tone spot for gain. All right. So now we can start messing with the tone a bit. Imagine this chicken is your hard drive. 
and the 80s metal band Cannon is a computer virus. Cannon does not like chicken and wants to destroy it. The chicken, not knowing Cannon's intentions, doesn't really have any feelings either way. Now you have a choice. Would you like to allow Cannon to have its way with your chicken, unleashing a wrath the likes of which the chicken has never seen? Whoa, take it easy, bro. This ain't over. Protect your chicken from cannon. I let the recording run over again. Uh, cause I got too into the pedal thing again. I need a different camera, like, guys, goddamn. Alright, we're gonna start the whole EQ section over again. <clears throat> ah! And he's in the drink! Mouth's getting dry from all this talking. We're going to start with the EQ at noon, and we are going to have the gain at around the 1130 mark, because that's where I believe, that's where, that's kind of where the greatest tone comes from, is either the 1130 or noon position. It depends on what you want to go for. You might, it, it's all up to preference, of course. This is my opinion. But this also enhance, lets us hear how the tone affects it more. So, clean, or, uh, you know, bass tone. Not, not our clean tone, but the bass tone of the pedal that we're going for. Let's use the loop. Alright, so there's the palette cleanser. Let's turn it to about the 1130 tone of the tone knob. Here's the loop. So, there's not a huge difference in tone, but we are only a little bit on the tone knob, of course. What this is going to start to do is it is going to start to kind of make your solo notes less piercing because it's, it's rolling off highs. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. So they're gonna be your solos are gonna be a little more mellow. They're not gonna be as shanking, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be more. I don't know. Boxing. <laughs> I, I this, is, this is kind of a bad analogy. Anyway, what it's also gonna do is because since it's rolling off highs, it's then kind of boosting the lows, which means that you're actually gonna get more distortion on your lower strings. There might not be too much of a difference at this level, but let's check the the noon. All right, so it's a very faint difference right now, but there is more volume to the low end, I think, and a little more distortion. From there, let's move the tone to the nine o'clock position. Here is the loop. So this is where it's going to be a little more defining what the what it's doing. So now you could probably hear that that is a thicker distortion despite us having the distortion, the gain, pretty low. So here, you know, here's the distortion the way it is now. And then let's turn it to noon. Okay, that sounded exactly the same, actually. <laughs> My fucking stupid. All right, well...
Am I am I fucking dumb? Alright, well it was do it it was different before. God damn it. In any word, any case, the low end is gonna be louder because it is boosting the low end. Maybe not boosting, but it's cutting out other frequencies to favor the low end. Because this is probably not an active EQ, it is probably a passive EQ, which means it can mostly just cut, not boost. Once again, your solos are a little more mellowed out, and you have a little bit more defined rhythm tone. Let's turn the tone all the way up. I mean, all the way down, really, because it's uh, all the way up on the dark side, all the way down total. Here's the loop. Alright, that loop is getting really dark now. So... But it is a pretty dark pedal at this point. So, the tone is pretty mellowed out no matter what right now. Even that distortion is pretty mellowed out because usually that grit you get from these kinds of pedals is more on the high end. So even that is getting mellowed out at this point. And then your solo tone. It still sounds a little distorted, um, which is good, but you know, it's just, it's definitely not, it's not slappy because you can't really get slappy tones out of not having very much highs and or mids. If you're focusing primarily on lows, it'll be, it's not as slappy. I don't know much about bass guitars, but I think there's a little bit of a, cause obviously bass has to focus on low notes, but you get slap bass. So there's obviously got, I think they might have like scooped tones kinda, I think they have some high end, maybe. I know nothing about bass guitar, so I'm just talking out my ass at this point. Let's turn it back to noon, get a palate cleanser. I swear to god, if the one day I get around to recording, and this whole thing is messed up, I'm gonna lose my gourd. Alright, palate cleanser, with tone at noon. Alright, so, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of noodling to get the real tone. Swear word. I don't even know what I'm going for. I do that pattern all the time, so I need to stop doing it. I don't know. I'm not a soloist. Anyway, I get the idea of what it sounds like, so let's turn the tone to about 2 o'clock. Here's the loop. The higher tones seem to be a little more dramatic, because I feel there's a lot more high-end capability when you turn the tone. I might just be wrong and dumb. But I already feel the notes, the solo notes getting slappier. You can feel, I feel the low end punching kinda. It's got all this kind of like percussive, I'm going to hit you. Which is a little strange, but I think that's just because the high notes are now getting louder. The high end register notes, rather than the low notes. So, there's, you know, a lot less bass, so these aren't going to be necessarily as powerful. They might be good in a mix, 
because then you'll have the bass guitar that might be helping you out. But as it is, it's as uh, as a standalone, it's not quite as strong, you know. Dick. Let's turn the tone to about three o'clock. Here's the loop. <laughs> That almost makes that uh, that loop sound normal. So where it stands, it kind of helps. Uh, define notes around the middle of the neck. Higher the neck, it's still about the same. So I think that right now the um, EQ is actually a little more mid focused. So this might sound a little more tube screamery because the tube screamer is a mid focused pedal. That also might not be the case. I actually have never owned a tube screamer, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Normally I prefer higher tone pedals. I don't know. I've come around to liking this pedal. Um, at first I thought it was super dark, because really it is, but that's when you have your guitar amps at noon. Because I had all my EQ at noon for the longest time, because I didn't really have a preference and I did all my EQing through the pedals. Unfortunately this one needed a little help on its own, but that's okay, because Really, you should set your amp to a little more the way you like it, I think. Okay, so let's get the full tone, and this one is going to be bright. Here it is with the loop. Alright, so this is the shank <laughs> setting. This is where things are gonna be pokey. There are high peaks, and then they kind of mellow out. Not mellow out, but, you know, they're not gonna be... It's not gonna be a very even sound. You're gonna get a lot of attack. wouldn't recommend this maximum um, tone unless you plan on using this as like a gain stage, probably. And by that I also mean the end gain stage, because that's a whole different subject. But if you have this one first, you're going to lose pretty much all of the tone, and then all of the tone is going to be on the second one. So if you use this one as the overdrive, and then use this one as the distortion overdrive, then this tone is just going to be a bad overdrive tone. And then... Your solos are boosted, at least they are very, they're very prominent. They will most likely not be lost in the mix, unless they're, so your, your drummer is really slamming on those crash cymbals. And it's just, and it's just pokey and quite loud. To me, it's leaning on the, on the side of obnoxiousness, actually, which is why when I tested turning the tone up for a distortion, distorted tone earlier, I actually turned it back just a little bit. Because since this pedal is not going for a high-end tone and obviously favors the dark uh, tones, it does not take long for it to get out of that real stabby pokey sound. So, that is obviously a little, it's, it sounds more like a normal pedal to me, 
overall my opinions of this pedal is very positive. It actually sounds better than my uh, blues driver. I don't, although my blues driver might be broken, but my blues driver is kind of just staticky and not distorted. It's pretty much all I can say about this pedal. Um, I might come back and do some more demos, some more sounds of uh, other pickups. I might not, but that's kind of gives you a good idea of what the sounds that you can get out of this pedal. So, for now, I'm going to say bye-bye.